Welcome everybody, this is Mr. Ndabezita once more and we are still looking at C-sharp programming language but this time we will be looking at understanding methods and implementation hiding. So uh, without wasting any time, let's go to uh, the compiler C-sharp 2022 and then when we get there, there are some things that we will do. Many of uh, the tutorials that I do, I explain as we progress. So we are just going to create a new project. And uh, let's just wait for it to load up before we can continue. Okay. Right, uh, we want to create a console app, so let's just name this as uh, methods and implementation hide. So let's just say methods uh, and implementation hide. Let's just say this is the name of our project saved on the desktop press next and .NET 6.0 and create that for us and uh, it will create an environment for us where we can interact with the console so just to give you a brief of what is going to happen here uh, we read a method is an encapsulated series of statements that carries out a task any class can contain an unlimited number of methods very important so uh, we will look at many things in this so let me just uh, come here erase a few things remember we need the namespace the class and the static void main so the namespace I'm going to just call that uh, methods I'm going to call that methods and uh, I'm going to create a public class and I'm just going to call this uh, methods methods underscore implementation hiding underscore and implementation hiding good and then remember inside of our class what we need is a static void main so this is static uh, void uh, main okay that is fine so let me just check the brackets and main so that we don't lose track oh end class and end uh, the name space okay something is missing i'm sorry let's just say string array of arguments that is fine so i think oh, sorry i had already done that so let me just get rid of this one so i have opening and closing of the main Okay, let me just do this so I have uh, opening opening and closing of the main class and the namespace okay that is fine so uh, we are going to use this main as uh, the main source of running our code so let me just go to the solution explorer so what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a folder, uh, add new folder, and I am going to call this folder hello class, hello class, and inside of this new folder, I am going to add an item, which is a class. So I'm going to call this class hello. 
hello right and just add that okay so we are just going to use the main to run everything that we have and i am going to code inside of this class because i'm going to create multiple classes for uh, this tutorial so let's just end uh, the class and let's just end uh, the name space okay that is fine and you can see that the namespace here is not this okay let me see if they are impl method implementation hiding method implementation hiding dot hello okay that is fine so when we are here in fact inside of this class now there are some few things we will start first with the basics just to create simple methods that uh encapsulate a certain functionality in the main and then as we progress in this we will we will advance ourselves so the very first thing that i want us to do is to just go to the main this and just have okay let me just uh import some few things remember I love importing very very much so uh, let's just say um, using static system dot console okay this is fine so I can I can I can do the following inside of the main I can have a right line and in this right line i can just uh print hello and i can just press ctrl f5 and run the code and see what will transpire right let's just wait for the compiler to finish up before we can do anything right there we have it so this is just a simple hello inside of the main nothing it's wrong with this so i can repeat this many times as i want by just doing that and i run this and uh, i can i can produce this i can i can have those hellos in many as many as possible as long as i have those right lines but now the question is what if i wanted to output these hellos maybe 50 times will you keep on saying console dot right line and so on 50 times no there has to be a easy way around this right so if i don't want to do that somebody might say i i can use a for loop in order to do that okay that's fine let's uh try and use a for loop for i can say int equals uh, zero uh, sorry int i equals zero and i should be less or equals uh, maybe i want to produce this 20 times 20 and i can say increment this i uh, plus sorry plus plus i and it will increment this by one every time so because I set at position zero, it will produce this 21 times. If I want to produce exactly 20, I have to say one. Okay, that is fine. So I can come here and what I can do, I can have a right line and I can just print that hello. No problem with this. Let's see if things will work the way we expect and i can have those hellos all right so somebody might say i can use a for loop to have the very same thing nothing wrong with this even if they want me to produce this 50 times or whatever nothing it's wrong that is also fine that is also true but uh there's something that we call a method and a method is uh, 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 uh the easy way of 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 calling something to happen in the main without even having to code in this way what i'm trying to explain is i can i can come here 
let me just erase this uh, because methods are created inside of a class just as we have read inside of a class you can create as many methods as you want so I can say uh, I can create a method and most of the methods that we will be creating they will be static so I can just say uh, static void it returns nothing static void and uh, I can say uh, this method is uh, print hello and the method accepts no parameters all it has to do is to just print hello to the console screen so I can have that right line and I can just come here and I can print hello once and what I can do I can go to the main and use the method name this is the method name and call this method name that will produce the output for me so what I can do I can just say print hello and it accepts no parameters I will assume that you have dealt with this in second semester so I'm not going to explain exactly uh, in greater detail what is happening here first year second semester I will assume that you have learned uh, how to use the methods so when I press control f5 and I try to run this I will have that hello and I can do the very same functionality as we did previously I can come here inside of this method I can have that for loop for int i equals 0 i less uh, than 20 if I want to produce 20 times it will produce 20 times if i equals 0 but if i equals 1 I will have to say less or equals to 20 that's fine and then I can uh, increment i every time by 1 and uh, once that condition is true I can print this hello 20 times nothing wrong let's run and see and i i have exactly the same thing so a method is a more simpler and convenient way of uh, producing an output by invoking a particular method but as we continue in this you will see why methods are very very important so uh one thing that i want us to do or just to produce uh is uh the following so what i want us to do is not to create a hello program what i want us to do is the following i want us to create the following method so let me just get rid of this and uh, get rid of that because we no longer have that method so what i want us to do i want us to create a display sales tax method so what i want us all our method for this tutorial will be static so we will have a public okay let's not create this inside of the main please let me just go inside of this class and create this method so it will be a public static void it returns nothing and I will call this display sales tax so display sales tax but this time it will receive some arguments some parameters so it will be of type double and we will call this the sale amount so let me just call this sale amount very good so what is it that I want this method to do first of all I'm going to declare some few variables inside of this methods so that I can achieve whatever that needs to be achieved now the first variable will be of type double and this will be called tax because i need to know the tax value and then i'm going to create uh, declare some constant uh, variables of type double and i will call this the rate and because it's a constant remember you have to immediately assign it a value 
so your tax rate will it will be uh, 0 0.07 and then I can calculate the tax your tax will be equals to the sales amount which I will receive as a parameter I will receive from uh, the main when I invoke this method I will have to provide the double sales amount so your tax is equals to the sales amount yeah just auto complete that by pressing tab multiplied by the rate and then once you have done that let me just import okay I don't have to import let me just copy this uh, and just sorry uh, paste it here good and then once the calculation has been done I just want to have a right line and in this right line all I want to say I just want to say the tax on uh, the tax on I will be using placeholders sorry the tax on is this then I will have my comma so the tax on at position zero I want to have the sales amount the tax on sales oh sorry on the sales amount now the tax on the sales amount now remember the sales amount will come as a double and it's a value it's an amount of money so I want to just say uh, dot to string just attach some currency on that very very important then at position one I want to take that tax because I want to know what your tax would be and your tax is the sales amount multiplied by the rate so that would be that will come as your tax so it will take the sales amount multiply that by 0 0.07 so it will calculate 0 0.07 of whatever amount that you uh, input and save that inside of tax so I want to also convert that uh, to string and I want to have that also as a currency right so this is what I want to do in this method very important so what I'm going to do I'm going to go to program in here and the first thing that I want to do I need to import this so let me just copy this and let me just come here enter V uh, and what I want to do is say using this so by saying this I am importing uh, this namespace so that I can be able to run whatever that is inside of hello in this separate namespace very important so when I am here I now want to call that method and remember we call a method by a method name but this is a class and it's not a static class and it is internal I cannot access that class inside here in order to access this class I need to make it public but if I want to access that method I will have to go through the class name first and then use the dot in order to display this method let me show you what I'm trying to say here so I will first have to create an object hello this is the name of the class so I will call that hello auto complete that for me so hello hello equals new hello so this is a class and this class does not uh, this is the class that I have all right so what am I doing here I am creating an object of that class so that when I am in that class I can say hello the object dot and I should be able to access a particular method so let's go and check the method 
public static void display sales text it's the name of the method so when i come here and i use the dot i should be able to see that method which says display so the method it's not there i have created the object of this class public class hello and inside of that class i have this method but when i come here trying to access that method it it doesn't work so i know that through the dot when i hover over this i should be able to see that now why is it not being displayed let's just go and check first of all our method is public it's a public static void display sales text okay so the class is public the method is public but when i try to come into the main once i have created the object of that class hello and and i have said that hello when i press the dot nothing is happening i don't see that method so the question is what might have went wrong that is the question so this is at last the new expression can be simplified okay let's see just potential fixes for this hello hello equals new hello so uh so that is just to say we can say just this new so we can simplify this by just saying new and that would simplify that we don't have to say hello hello equals new hello you can just do that so i cannot find that method okay that is fine so when i come here if i make this class public and i make this class static and i come here and i just comment this and then i just say uh, the class name hello dot and now I have the display sales text when when I make this list let me show you something it accepts uh, suppose the money it's 1500 now let me show you what we are trying to achieve here now when the class is public and the class is not static, this is just a public class. Hello, it's the name of the class. And then when I come here and I try this, this would be an error. This, it's not going to work because now this class is not static. So I cannot use the class name dot in order to access this method so this it's not going to work so let's just run this let me show you what i'm trying to say oh it's working it's it's working it's very much working so i can just use the class name public class hello and i can just say hello dot so this will work just fine this is exactly what we should have done so we don't have to create the object of that class so we can just use the class name together with a dot and then this would be able to display that for us this is very good so the text on 1500 it's 105 so this is the 0.07 percentage here it is so 0.07 is multiplied by 1500 and then the text value that you will be text on will be an amount of 105 rand all right
good. That is fine. So uh, another thing that I want us to do is to say, okay, that is fine. That is very much fine. We have been able to do that. And then one thing that I want us to do now is to go to uh, create another class and then do the following. So I want us to go inside of this. Uh, let's go and create a new item. And we will use call this class uh, use the method text or use uh, the text method. All right, let's just create them. And then once that is created, what we are going to do, right, we have this. And then what I want us to do inside of here, I want us to create a main. The first thing that we need to do is just to create a main or, or let's not do this. Delete. Yes, let's not do this. I don't want to confuse you with many classes. Let's just go uh, to this main. And then when we are inside of this main, let's have, let's declare a double. And let's call this my purchase. And let's assign it a value of 12 rand 99. Okay, and then secondly, what I want us to do, I want us to create a method. All right, uh, let's not create a method. Let's call the display sales. Okay, let me just do this. Let's call the display sales text. So let me just say hello dot display sales text and now inside there I want to pass remember because it accepts an argument I want to pass my purchase good this is what I want to do so once I have been able to do that then I want to say the display sales text so the display uh, sorry uh, hello dot display sale text now i want to say the value it's 35 rand 67 so do you see what i'm trying to do here i am not overriding these methods please be very careful i will explain to you once we are done here i am not overriding anything what i am simply doing here i am calling Sorry, uh, okay. What I am doing here, I am calling this method inside of the hello class display sales text. And what it will do, because it accepts a parameter from the previous uh, method inside of this class, it accepts a sales amount and calculate that. Okay, that is fine. So it will display uh, the 0.07 percent tax of 1,500. I am calling this method once more. Hello dot display sales, but this time I am passing in the value my purchase, which is 1,299. I want to know the 0.07 tax on this amount of 1,299. And then I am calling this method again, and I want to calculate the tax on 35 francs. Uh, 67 using 0 0.07 as the what now as the rate so i am not overriding anything here so i am just calculating text based on three different values very important so let's just run this and check if this is so right so the text on 1500 previously we saw 
that it's 105 rand and the tax of 12 rand 99 the tax on 12 rand 99 is 0 0.91 and the tax on 35 rand 67 it's 2 rand 50 very very important that we understand what is happening here i am not overriding anything I am just calculating the different tax values for different amounts. This is exactly what I have done. This is very, very important that you, you understand. Now, having shared with you that and assuming that you have understood, let's now go and look at a method where we can accept more than one argument and see what will transpire. This is fascinating stuff. So I'm going to come inside of the very same class and just create a method. Now remember, this is where the method begins and ends. So let me just say uh, end uh, sales tax. That's fine. So this is where this method ends. So I am going to create a public. It is going to be static. It will return nothing. And I will call this method the display sales text. But this time, it will ac uh, accept two arguments. So, I can use the same method name as long as the number of arguments or the parameters that a method accept are different, then it's, 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 it's not a problem. This is the power behind the force of creating uh, methods all right so i will take the very same name method name so i'm going to copy this and i'm going to paste that right now it will accept a double sales amount comma and it will accept another argument which we call the tax rate good and the compiler, it's no more uh, arguing. The names are, ex are exactly the same, the method names, but this one accepts one argument, this one accepts two arguments. So that makes these two methods unique. I that is sketch, sketch, my God. Right, now, what we are going to do now we are going to declare a certain variables inside of this method so we will have a double again and this will be the text just as we did in the previous one and the text is calculated more or less the same we take the sales amount and we will multiply that by the tax rate so we accepting two arguments uh, from the user so what i can do again i can just copy this and just paste this oh sorry uh, undo enter paste so but in this one what is it that i want to do i want to say the text on this at this certain position is that and but now here there's just one thing that i want us to look at so this is exactly the same because at position zero i will have sales amount at position one i will have tax but i am receiving both from the user so the output this right line is exactly the same as that right line but this one accepts one argument this one accepts two arguments so i can come here now let me just comment these ones right that's fine so i want to say hello dot display sales text all right now this one accepts a double sales amount you see it tells you it shows us here this one so this is not the method that i want dot i want uh display i want the second one display sales text and immediately when i do this 
this one okay okay it's fine it's fine so let's pass in the argument so 1500 and now you see immediately when you say comma now it will understand that okay he is calling the second method that accepts two arguments so you need to provide the tax rate so in this one the tax rate was already there so for this one let's say uh, 0 0.10 so this method please let me show you something when you say hello dot display sales and you do this okay let me do this when you do this and you say display it doesn't matter which one you will choose they have exactly the same names what will make the difference it's it knows for example when i do this and i say 1500 and i close i am calling the first method it knows that but when i do this it will immediately know that no he is calling the same method but the one that accepts two arguments very important so let me just erase this so uh let's run this and see what will transpire so the first one is the method that accepted only one argument the second one the tax on 1000 okay the tax on 3567 which one is that it's the first one that accepts one argument and this one is the second one that accepts two arguments so the tax on uh, 1500 is that okay so this is very very important all right now that we have shared this minimum uh, knowledge just these basic knowledge so what i want us to do is to have another method because we will be dealing with methods so i want to come into this class and having so many methods like this inside of one class is called method overloading so we are overloading these methods we have more than one so let's just say end uh, display whatever so the second uh that i want us to look at uh, the method that i want us to look at is uh, how to calculate the pay the cross pay of an individual so we will have a public it will be static it will be void okay okay let's just wait a, a bit with the void messages let's just allow this method to return something let's allow it to return a double and the name of the method will be uh, calculate pay and this method will accept two arguments so it will be of type double and we will call this okay in order for us to calculate your pay we need to know the hours that you have worked and we will have another argument of type double and we need to know uh, the rate so let's have a variable of type double and let's call this the cross this will be the amount and then we will say that the cross is equals to what now it's equals to ours this is how we calculate your cross and then we multiply that by the rate okay that is fine and then what we will do, we will uh, return uh, the cross autocomplete for us. Okay. Uh, let me just close this. Let me just do that. Okay, that is fine. Suppose this is uh, the method that we have. And then once we have that method, what is it that we want to do? What is it that we, we want to do? So we want to go to the main, this is the program, the main, and then we want to declare some few variables. So first of all, I want to have a double and I will call this my hours 
and i will say okay my hours 37.5 that is fine right because i will be having more than one double uh, type of a variable i will call the other one my rate and this will be equals to 12.75 okay and i will have another variable which i will call the cross pay right so i am just going to calculate that cross pay so the first thing that i want to do is to show the calculation how do i calculate the cross pay so my cross pay will be equals to calculate pay which is that method which we have in here so i know i need to use a a a a a, a, a the name of the class so i'm going to say hello dot calculate pay there it is so the cross pay this is very very important it's equals to what now so i know this method let's go i know that this method accepts two arguments it accepts hours and rate all right so i will come here i need to pass those two so i will say uh, those hours will be equals to my hours so i'm going to say my hours and that rate will be equals to my rate auto complete that for me oh jesus i ah, yes yeah, sure so this is very important it's very very important that you understand the way in which i am going to use this method functionality very very important i i'm trying to do this in a clever way so that you need to understand and be very careful in the process of what is happening here so after i have been able to calculate this cross pay now i need to show something to the user so i can just have a right line and in this right line i will just say i i have worked you have worked for i will use placeholders i have worked for maybe 23 uh hours at uh, a certain uh, sorry uh, at sorry for uh, a certain hours i have worked 23 hours at uh, a rate per hour and then what i want to have here is just to pass in my hours comma and pass in my rate this is exactly what I want to do. So I just want to say I have worked 37.5 hours at 12.75 per hour. This will be your rate, the rate. So we just calculate uh, your pay on that rate. Okay, that is fine. And then once I have been able to do that to you, then I want to have a right statement because i had a right line this time i want to have a right line statement again so this will be my right line statement then what is it that i want to display i have to display the cross pay of this individual so i will just say uh your uh, cross or my cross pay your cross pay is and i will display uh the value of the cross pay so i will just say do i have cross pay yes i will just say cross pay dot uh to string and just print that out with some uh, currency symbol embedded in it very very important so let's go through this before we can even run this code so i'm going to comment this one and just comment that one so what i have done here let's start first in this i have declared a public static double which is calculate pay it returns a double it accepts two argument hours and rate and then your cross which is a double 
your cross is equal to hours multiplied by the rate and it will return the cross. So when I get here, I am declaring two variables on behalf of these arguments. So I'm saying double my hours is 37.5, my rate 12.75, and this is the cross pay, right? So I'm saying the cross pay is going to be equals, I am calling this method, which returns a cross pay and accepts two argument, hello.calculatePay, so I am passing in, because it accepts two arguments of type double, I'm passing in 37.5 for hours and 12.75 for my rate. And then I calculate my cross pay. Because I know this method returns a double. Very, very important. Right. So it will go to this method. It will perform the calculations that are necessary hour multiplied by rate. And then once done that, it will take that value, save that value inside of cross pay. So all I'm saying, I'm saying I have worked for these hours uh, uh, at 12.75 per hour. Then your cross pay is and then it will display the cross pay for me. Very, very important. So let's run this and check. I have worked, let's check. I have worked 37.5 hours at uh 37 okay something it's wrong sorry 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 so this is all oh, i have made a mistake here so here i have to say my rate good so secondly let's just run this so it says i have worked 37.5 hours at 12.75 per hour your cross pay is 478.12 cent. So what has just basically happened here? What has just basically happened here is this calculation. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, what is happening? Okay. Uh, what has happened is basically this calculation where it is. Sorry. Uh, where here this is exactly what has happened you have taken just hours and multiplied that by the rate and you just displayed it that's exactly what has happened so it took 37.5 multiplied that by 12.75 because that's exactly what the call pay method does it only takes the hours and multiply that by the rate and return the cross so hence when we are here we have to have that variable which is cross and this is equals to the multiplication of the two i'm storing that inside of cross pay and i am displaying them this is exactly what has happened so uh this is uh me for uh this tutorial and uh guys thanks for watching i will see you in uh the next tutorial